So Jay Doyle um, is the Natural Environment Advisor with the Policy Advice Team of the Forestry Commission, having held previous roles with Forestry Scotland, Scottish Natural Heritage and the uh, Surrey Wildlife Trust. His areas of expertise include natural environment policy management and restoration of woodlands and forests. And he's going to speak to us today um, with a presentation titled The Tree Toolkit to Guide Conservation and Land Management. So if you're ready, I'll hand over to you, Jay. That's brilliant. Thanks very much, Kylie. Uh, and just to say, folks, I've done a slight rejigging of the, the title, but we will get to the same, the same end point. Um, and, and also to say thank you. This has been such a, a, well, a fantastic event. Um, and I'm really privileged to be here. Um, just to briefly say, yes, um, uh, for 17 years, my experience was working as an operational ecologist, uh, advising on the management of the public forest estate in the south of England. In the past two years, I've moved over to policy. Uh, but I suppose my, my influence that sort of set me out on this journey was very much about sort of thinking globally, but acting locally and, and helping to conserve a local disused quarry that was coming back to life, so to speak, in terms of recombinant ecology. So, so uh, this is a, a very uh, sort of personal thing for me, quite a long, lifelong journey. And it's a, a privilege to be here and a privilege to be working with the Forestry Commission. But without further ado... Uh, I will just give you a quick overview of what I'm here to talk about. Uh, I'm going to touch on the UK forestry standard, uh, make reference to the England Trees Action Plan and the government ambition for woodland creation, uh, talk about um, some of the checks and balances in place, the Operations Note 43. These are the principles that you need to consider uh, when, when considering a forestation in relation to priority open habitats. So we'll touch on that. Um, talk about survey briefs we've developed uh, to inform woodland creation in and around priority habitats. Uh, talk about our internal ecology team that has come on board uh, only this past year. And how we go about assessing a woodland creation proposal. And finish up by just um, having, a, having a little look into this notion of hotspot mapping to support the woodland creation process and some of the new tools that are coming online. Um, most recently, the, the BTO developed a breeding birds hotspot work, and, and hopefully that we're going to hear more about later today from subsequent speakers, the BSBI's botanical data and how that can be used to, to flag up key sites. So the UK forestry standard is the guiding document for sustainable forestry in the UK, uh, covering all four nations within, within the UK. Uh, I'm specifically interested, of course, in, in my role as, as in the biodiversity section. Um, but the, the key point to make here is that all sections of this document are in some way interlinked. Uh, and where, the, where there are connections, for instance, between wetlands and, and water issues, that is set out in the document. Uh, some really uh, key guidelines in this, such as the need for 10% open space as a minimum in new woodland creation. Uh, so I, I would urge people, if you haven't familiarised yourself with this document, please do, do have a look. Uh, and um, it's, it's rather intuitive and do work yourself way th through the, the various sections. Now, back in May, the, the government launched, and this is a UK publication, uh, the England Trees Action Plan. And this is for the duration of this parliament. Uh, it was launched in tandem with the England Peat Action Plan, which is, which is really important uh, for, for a variety of reasons, but it's intended to be delivered in tandem. And you'll note that many, when you read the document, many of the actions are common and interoperable between the, the actual policy documents. So the, the government is committed to spending 500 million of the 640 million Nature for Climate Fund on trees and woodlands over a five year period. That, that means effectively 30,000 hectares of new woodland to be established across the UK by the end of the Parliament. There's a, there's a long-term vision of 12% of England being covered in woodland by the middle of this century, up from around about 10.1% today. I mentioned earlier Operations Note 43, uh, the principles for afforestation on or near priority habitats. This is a really important uh, document, both for uh, Forestry Commission staff, but also landowners and proposers of new 
woodland that may have an impact upon priority habitats, wooded and open. And it hinges on eight core principles. So all proposals have to meet the requirements of the UK forestry standard and also comply with the various regulatory requirements relating to forestry. There's a general presumption against the forestation of non-wooded Section 41 priority habitats, those habitats listed in the, the NERC Act of 2006. The, the applicant, uh, the, the landowner, can consider changes to existing priority habitats, which may include planting broadleaves and mixed woodlands on poor quality, lower value sites. So it doesn't rule out woodland creation, but it has to be very carefully considered. And, and critically, applicants must engage with Natural England to consider any proposals which include potential changes to existing priority habitat that would be regarded as, as a potential loss or damage. Where a forestation is appropriate on a site, the planting design uh, should address the existing biodiversity interest of the site and use the hierarchy of avoid, mitigate or compensate for any unavoidable loss. Any of forestation on the priority habitat should adhere to the definition of native woodland given in the practice guide Managing Ancient and Native Woodland in England. That was uh, released back in 2010. And I should say any publications I cite today, folks, I will include the links in the chat after my presentation. So a forestation should, as a minimum, result in no net loss of biodiversity, especially where public funds have been provided. It's reasonable to require a net gain as a result of a forestation. And the standard metric for assessing net gain or loss of habitat is currently a simple area measurement in hectares. So to um, continue the, the work that was set out within the Operations Note 43, last year we developed a, a, a field guide, um, Priority Open Habitats and Woodland Creation. And I will again include reference to this in the chat, but please, um, please do have a look at this. Um, it, it's intended to uh, support the sustainable creation of woodland and avoid impact upon priority open habitats. To further support this work of, of consideration of the suitability of sites for woodland creation, over the course of last, well, last spring, we developed uh, three interim briefs, uh, all interlinked in some way, um, focusing on peat, vegetation and breeding birds. And that's been trialled this summer. We'll be refining that over the course of the autumn ahead of next year's survey season. So that's been uh, a first, but it's effectively setting up a standard for how we assess sites. Uh, and, and the vegetation um, has been um, a really interesting piece of work to develop. And I'll say a little bit more about that in due course. Um, going back to March, we appointed five ecologists on the Forest Services side of the Forestry Commission. That's, that's the part of the organisation that provides um, advice, uh, guidance, uh, deals with regulation, policy incentives, um, as opposed to Forestry England that, that manages the public forest estate but of course, with whom we work very closely. So these ecologists have come from a broad um, variety of previous uh, parts of the ecology sector, and about a fifth of their time is actually spent supporting the national team um, in terms of providing expertise, uh, of which there's a wide range on, on biodiversity net gain, ecological survey, uh, species recovery. So it, it's a fantastic team uh, to work with, and uh, they spend a large part of their time looking into woodland creation proposals and assessing those proposals, inputting into woodland management plans, and also uh, increasingly working in partnership. So here would be a sort of a typical example of a woodland creation proposal um, indicated by the, the, the red boundary lines. We've mapped on the priority habitat layer here from the priority habitats inventory. Uh, showing that there's a, an existing area of deciduous woodland uh, judged to be a, a section 41 habitat. And of course, we'll need to know the nature of this. We, we can see from this uh, aerial photograph that to the sort of northeast, there's an area of mani manicured sports pitch. Um, to the west, we have arable land. And, and actually, I happen to know that the lower uh, portion here is um, a former landfill, but the upper area is indeed a local wildlife site. Uh, so that's just sort of some sort of uh, local knowledge that I have. But um, 
obviously the the ecology team and the consultants appointed to work on behalf of woodland creation proposers need needs to know more about the nature of the land landscape here so this is just an example of a, a very early sort of interim assessment sheet we developed and it's rather sort of uh, top down bottom up but but it covers such things as designations, the priority habitat inventory, what's that telling us? Uh, is the site in close association with an important plant area? But crucially, it doesn't um, include local wildlife sites. Given we don't have access to that data set across the board. And we are talking um, and with, with the local record centres about bringing that um, arrangement into place in due course, which would be a very important development. What we have done more recently is work on uh, hotspot mapping in association with the BTO, a, a modelling project that has been ground truth over the course of the summer. What this allows us to do is look at assemblages of breeding birds and, and uh, look at the sensitivity in the landscape. And so you'll see here the individual species in this upland context uh, scored on the basis of one to five, five being the highest in terms of sensitivity. When you zoom back out, you get you can arrive at a heat map, and this is, is an example of a, a curlew heat map with uh, the dark red or the level five being the very highest um, order of concern. This can, can help to inform survey efforts and potentially steer woodland creation away from areas that are vital for curlew conservation. So this is a really important development, both in terms of informing woodland planting and woodland creation through natural colonization, but also will assist in the, the curlew species recovery efforts as well. So going back to uh, this uh, case study I raised earlier, which I'll, I'll close on today in my presentation, um, we, we obviously have the knowledge that, that I've provided that this one of those localities is indeed a local wildlife site. Now, the, the BSBI and Natural England and, and others been, have been working on uh, uh, some tools to help inform sensitivity in the landscape. And this is, I think, a, a really fascinating, important development. And you know, we're very excited about this at the Forestry Commission as regards how it might help to fill in some of the blank spaces beyond the existing mapped priority habitat inventory. Um, but there are also ap other applications that I can't really touch on today due to time. But for instance, uh, looking at the quality of ancient woodland and assessing uh, priorities for ancient woodland restoration, for instance. So there, has, uh, the, there is a number of applications, um, but, but we're very pleased to be working with the BSBI and Natural England on, on this and, and hope to be an end user uh, of the tools in due course. So here we have um, my final slide, which is just an example of that landscape where this woodland creation, uh, imaginary woodland creation proposal uh, was, was zoned. Um, what we're hoping, you know, sort of the, the benefits of, of this hotspot mapping using botanical data will be is an ability to look at the, the distribution of priority plant species. And I use that as an all encompassing term in, in terms of uh, scheduled and red data book species and section 41 species, uh, but also um, fundamentally the indicators of good quality habitat. What is uh, a representative priority habitat, for instance, um, whether or not it's actually degraded, um, whether there is a discussion to be had about either its restoration to priority open habitat or, or potentially whether there is some scope for woodland creation. And, and lastly, I think a good development along and, and in tandem with the work that's happened on waders would be this notion of uh, sensitivity mapping to, to enable a landscape scale perspective to look at, for instance, uh, green where um, woodland creation uh, was was feasible, amber where woodland creation might require some consideration, but, but, but is still feasible, and red zones where woodland creation would be inappropriate because of impact upon the botanical interest. So uh, that's my uh, presentation and uh, thank you very much for allowing me to, to talk. Brilliant, thank you very much, Jade. That was great.